What's up guys, this is Connor and welcome back to Three Pedal Devils. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install the Three Pedal Devils rear brake clevis kit for the Tau Tau TVR7. Here's what it looks like. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing we got to do is show you what tools you need to complete the job. It's a pretty simple install, so there's not too much that you need, and there's actually a few different options that would work, so I'll run through those real quick here. One option is to use a three millimeter Allen key, or hex key, whatever you like to call them, and an eight millimeter socket on your favorite ratchet. That'll allow you to keep the shoulder screw stationary and tighten the hex nut with the eight millimeter ratchet. Then at the end, you'll go ahead and use a torque wrench to tighten the fastener to five newton meters. The other tool that you'll need to tighten down the hex jam nut is this 13 millimeter wrench. Any 13 millimeter wrench will do. You could even accomplish it with a crescent wrench. So the other option is to use a three millimeter Allen socket on a ratchet with a eight millimeter wrench to hold the hex nut. Kind of works as the same way. You just have one tool to drive, one tool to hold. And then what you can do is go ahead and put your three millimeter Allen socket on your torque wrench. Once you get to the end, you'll hold your eight millimeter wrench and use this torque wrench to tighten to five newton meters. Either way works just fine. Whatever tools you have will do the job. Just wanted to show you those two options that should work out pretty good. So the first step is that you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and remove your stock brake clevis if you do have one. A lot of people don't even receive these when they get their TBR7. Um, but if you're one of the lucky ones who did, what you wanna do is pull your pin out of the clevis after removing the cotter pin. I can't show you that step because mine broke off when I was riding, so I no longer have them. But you'll pull that pin, pop your clevis back like this, and then you're free to rotate it off. Now you have your stock clevis removed. I would not recommend throwing this away. I would hold on to it just because they are impossible to get. And if for whatever reason you need the stock clevis for a buddy, for a second bike that you buy, um, as a backup, whatever you want, it's good to keep this around. So put that somewhere safe and then let's move on to installing this thing. So now to get ready to install our clevis kit, what you wanna do is grab the nice little black box that it comes in, open up this front flap, just like that. You'll take out your info card, which shows how the parts go together with that exploded view on the front. On the back side, it tells you what comes in the kit and shows some basic assembly steps on how to put it together, which I'm telling you how to do in this video. Remove the top foam, and then there should be this little baggie with your kit sitting right in there. What you want to do is double check and make sure that you've got all four components that should come with the kit. So the first thing will be this stainless steel clevis. Next thing will be a M8 by 125 hex nut. And lastly, you will have a M6 with a five millimeter thread shoulder screw and an M5 by 0.8 flanged nylon locking hex nut. First thing to do to install is to take the eight millimeter hex nut, thread it up onto the threaded shaft of the rear brake master cylinder. So you're gonna get it started and then just thread it up out of the way far up as you need to. I usually just put mine all the way to the top. Next, you'll take your clevis and you will thread it onto that same eight millimeter threaded rod. So you'll thread that up to where you think a good position is gonna be. It all depends where you want your brake lever to sit and where you have your rear brake light switch adjusted to. But I already have mine adjusted kind of where I want it. It's a good position for my foot to push the pedal and I've got the brake light switch adjusted pretty good in this position as well. So just slightly off the natural um, position from the spring force is where I like mine. So I'll adjust my clevis until the holes get pretty close to lining up there. Then I'll take my shoulder screw, the little axle piece for it. And I like putting the head side on the outside of the bike because it looks a little prettier than the nut. And you'll just get the hole to line up, push it all the way through. Then you'll take your nylon locking flange nut, thread it onto the back side by hand just to get it started. Once it starts engaging the nylock is when it'll tighten up and that's when you need to grab whatever your preferred tool set is. Here I'm going to use the eight millimeter socket on a ratchet and a three millimeter hex key and I'm just going to tighten the screw and nut up till it locks onto the shoulder of that shoulder screw and there I can feel it get pretty tight. And now here, what I'm gonna do is switch to 
this torque wrench, which I have set to five Newton meters. I'm gonna throw a three millimeter hex socket on there. And I will take an eight millimeter wrench just to show you the other tool combination and put the wrench on the back side. And I'll set this three millimeter Allen in there, hold the wrench tight on the back side. And I will tighten until my torque wrench indicates that I've hit five Newton meters. And there I know that my clevis has tightened up on the bottom. You should be able to feel a little bit of play between the clevis and the brake lever that's designed in so that it doesn't seize up and so that the clevis is fit on everybody's TVR7, um, accounting for the manufacturing variants on the brake levers themselves. Last step is to tighten down the jam nut on the top to hold your position as well as stay loaded on one side of the threads so you don't wear the threads out on either piece from fatigue over time. Then what you're gonna do is tighten up that jam nut nice and tight. You can crank it down like I just did. Or another good way, and what I usually do, is put a crescent wrench on the clevis, hold that tight while I take the 13 millimeter wrench and tighten it down into the clevis. Once you've completed all those assembly steps, you wanna double check that your lever moves with your linkage following suit and transferring the force into your brake master cylinder. And the next thing to do would be to take this thing out on the trail or the road and test it out. One thing that I do wanna mention with the M5 nylon locking hex nut is that the nylock is pretty good at resisting the nut from loosening during vibration, but they are a limited use. So every time you thread this on and remove the nut, you're wearing into that nylock portion a little bit. And I think that they say after three or four times of uh, assembly and removal, that nylon part will be kind of worn out and you may not have the full locking strength against vibration. So what I'd recommend if you plan to take this on and off a bunch of times for whatever reason is to start placing some blue Loctite 242 on the threads after doing a removal on this axle and nylon locking nut uh, three or four times just, just for safety. And if that does happen to you after you tighten and loosen your fastener multiple times, definitely reach out to me at threepedaldevils at gmail.com and I'll help you get the issue figured out and even send you a new hex nut if that's what it takes to get your TBR7 back on the road. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to this install. It's a very simple part to install. Um, just wanted to make this video to help you walk through it step by step just in case there were any uh, things you were wondering about and so you knew how to put this thing together. I did also include these instruction steps on the back side of this card that comes in the kit. These components are for sale via the links down in the description below. I've got them for sale on eBay, tbr7.com, and through a Google order form. So if you're interested in this part, definitely check those out. Place your order and I'll get it sent out to you as soon as possible. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions about this kit. I don't think there's too much more to say about this kit other than it's been a fun project for me and I hope to continue designing other parts for the TBR7 in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.